Our lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning with verse 19. Now this was John's testimony when the Jews of Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fall to, uh, fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Christ. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, no, I'm not. Are you the prophet? And he said, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the desert. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now some Pharisees who had been sent questioned him. Why then do you baptize if you're not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This, this all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I would not have known him except that the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is he who ba will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And then he says, I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. I have seen and I testify that this is the Son of God. So it was a reading of God's holy word. Let us pray. Gracious God in heaven, we ask that you open our hearts to this word. Help us to hear and, and experience the message you want us to, to live by, the message you want us to take away this Sunday. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The gospel begins with verse 19 of chapter 1 in John, with the witness of John the Baptist. Every day, every day, we are given the opportunity, all of us, to witness for Jesus. All of us. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. It's, sometimes it's in the grocery store, in a barber shop, at a mall, at a school, at a place of work, at a physician's office, waiting to see the physician. I've had countless conversations with people in all those places that just happen to come up and we get to talking, and before you know it, we're sharing what God means to us. It doesn't have to be running around with banners. It doesn't have to be someone on the street. You don't have to go out on the street and start shouting people to repent. It doesn't have to do with that. It has to do with living your life for Christ. John the Baptist came proclaiming Jesus' message of justice. And I pray that we in the church be prophets for our own time. Help us to, may God help us to work to make our government more aware of its responsibilities to those under its authority. It's up to us to push our government whether they are rich or poor or black or white or male or female and, and whatever their political or religious persuasions, they're to do their job. We ask that by our words and our prayers and our actions, we may be forerunners for God's kingdom of love and justice and peace. One woman once said, I can't make my child become a Christian. I wish it was that simple. But I hope that what I do and what I say will show what Christ means to me and will show where God may be found. I can't tell you how many times in all the years I've been in ministry, and I've been in ministry a long time, in all the years that I've been in ministry, I constantly hear this question. How can I make my child 
be a Christian? How can I make my husband be more faithful to coming to church? How can I get my wife to, to believe in, in, in the Lord? How can, I, how can I make them be a Christian? You can't. The answer is what this woman said. I hope that what I do and what I say will show what Christ means to me and will show where God may be found. That's the witness. That's the pointing to Jesus. John the Baptist came to prepare the way for Jesus' coming. And I pray that in our church we seek to prepare the way for Jesus to come into the lives of others. In our walk with Christ, may his love be seen in our lives and in our actions. John the Baptist was not sitting in judgment on other people by living in this simple, weird manner. But what he was saying is that he did not agree with the way society is going. The quality of life comes from who you are, what you are, and not from what you earn. Shortly after being installed as the 20th pastor of Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered a sermon in November of 1954. And it was entitled, Transformed Nonconformist. And he said in the sermon this The Christian is called upon not to be like a thermometer conforming to the temperature of his society, but he must be like a thermostat serving to transform the temperature of his society. Now, let me read it again because I think it's profound. The Christian is called upon not to be like a thermometer conforming to the temperature of his society, but he must be like a thermostat serving to transform the temperature of his society. The Baptist was a thermostat. He didn't conform to the temperature of his society. He transformed the temperature. He turned up the heat. He had gotten through to the nations, to his people. He'd finally broken down their barrier that they were hiding behind, and he had pierced the people's conscience. They began to flock to him because what he was saying they knew was true about themselves and things that they didn't like about themselves, things they were doing and part of the things they were doing. He got through to them, and they wanted to change. They grew sick of themselves. They came to him believing that he was the one he, he's got to be the Messiah. Look at all these people. Uh, but the Baptist wouldn't take that. He could have. He could have taken on all that glory. He could have had all those people surrounding him worship him. But he didn't. Because his job was to point to Jesus. And he pointed straight to Jesus. This is the one. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. I baptize with water, but he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. It's time for me, John says, to step out of the picture. He is to increase and I am to decrease. What about now? Now it's up to us. We're not the Savior, but we have a role to play. We are here to prepare the way for people to meet Jesus. That's our role. I came across this poem of an unknown author that I wanted to share with you. In lonely places, the wilderness, where we stand forlorn, windswept, and alone, your voice calls out, prepare a way for the Lord. In the dark places, the shadows, where we hide our fears, Embrace our tears. Your voice calls out. Prepare a way for the Lord. There are so many people, friends, and you know them. There are so many people out there that are lost and alone and filled with fear, not knowing what to do with their life. And it's up to us to prepare the way for Jesus to enter their lives. Now, some of us might say, well, I can't do that. I mean, I don't know how to witness. 
I don't know how to talk to people about Jesus. I'm too embarrassed to do that. Well, you don't have to talk to them about Jesus. And you don't have to push Jesus. You just have to show Jesus' love in your life. And then when you have the opportunity to share how Jesus has made a difference in your life. We need to get ourselves out of the way and allow God to use us. If not us, though, who else will do it? Who else is going to prepare the way for the Lord if we're not going to? Have you ever thought of that? Gordon Johnson, who wrote an article entitled Finding Significance in Obscurity, shared a story about a, a gentleman in a, a Baptist church in Minneapolis, which is an amazing story. He says, many years ago in the city of Minneapolis at Bethlehem Baptist Church, they needed a Sunday school teacher for the junior boys. This class wasn't bad, just energetic. And, and I remember when I was going to school at Trinity University, I was attending First Presbyterian Church in San Antonio, and they had in their newsletter that they needed someone to help teach the junior high boys. And I, you know, not using my head, I'll do it. And so they signed me up. And man, those boys took my lunch. I mean, they were something. It was an inter a good experience, but they, it, it was not my calling. <laughs> In this particular church, the, uh, no teacher had been able to control them. But then there was Ewald Chaldberg, a Swedish masseur. He was asked to teach, and he took the junior boy class. Ewald still had his Swedish accent. And buzzing all over the church was the word, he'll never make it. Three weeks in, he's done, I can guarantee it. But somehow, Ewald Chalberg believed God would take him and use him to teach these boys. And he stayed with them for years. And he kept teaching these boys. Now, some years ago later, Gordon Johnson was asked to come back to the church to share in a service. And the service was basically celebrating the 10th anniversary, well, remembering the 10th anniversary of the death of Ewald Chalberg. 10th anniversary. Now, how do you like that? A layman in the church, and they're celebrating the 10th anniversary of his death. During the service, they recounted that at least 40 men out of that class were in Christian service someplace in the world because Ewald Ch Chalberg taught boys, loved them, and watched over them as they grew. Ewald Chalberg had faith to believe that God could overcome his human limitations. He gave himself over to God and believed God could somehow use him. And he helped point these boys to Jesus. He prepared the way. And so I have a, a charge, challenge for the new year for you. And here it is. For the desert places in which we walk, the streets we roam, the paths we cross, guide our feet. feet. Take us to places where you would go. Give us words that you would use for this new year of promise and preparation so that we might point the way with John the Baptist to the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That is my charge and that is my challenge for this year. So go out and do it. Amen.